Warning, the following video will contain spoilers for an episode of Miraculous Ladybug. If you want my recommendation, watch the episode I am watching before continuing on with this video. But if you don't care about spoilers, then just sit back and enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome back to my Miraculous Marathon. So when we began this particular series with the bubbler, while I felt like it was a good episode, the villain was just ridiculous. Ridiculous design, ridiculous motives, ridiculous everything. Just like ridiculousness. So how shall we continue this series with a start like that? By having the next episode contain a villain that is just as ridiculous as the last one, except this time, he is centered around birds! Yeah. 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 And so, I present to you, episode 2, Mr. Pigeon. This is going to be one of those days, people. So we begin our episode in Francois Dupont High School. The principal of the school, Mr. Damocles, voiced by J.C. Hike, announces to Miss Bustier's class that there is going to be a special contest sort of assignment. They will have one day to work on a fashion piece that will not only be presented to Gabriel Agreste, but Adrian Agreste himself will model with the winning design in his next photo shoot. And this year's theme will be... Derby hats. Derby hats? Derby hats. How could anyone model with a derby hat? Who would model it with a derby hat? Who has modeled with a derby hat? I tried searching up photos of men who have modeled with derby hats, or bowler hats if you're in Britain, and my search results came up almost empty. Anyways, while she is excited at first, Marinette not only flips out, as she's had experience with making plenty of hats minus the derby, I've got top hats, caps, even two horned hats! Need a beret? I'm your girl. A sombrero? No problemo! But a derby? Probably should have learned to do that when trying to make every single other hat, Marinette, because one of those days, the one hat that you never learn to make will bite you in the ass like a serpent. Wearing a derby hat. Like a fine gentleman. But she also begins to overthink about what could go wrong like the paranoid klutz that she is. You know what? It won't even matter because I'll probably make a total fool of myself at the event, most likely trip over my stupid derby and collapse on Mr. Agrest, give him a full-blown concussion and Adrian will hate me! I'll never be a world-renowned fashion designer! MY LIFE IS OVER! Well, if you keep on acting like that, or a hypocritical farce that calls herself a hero, then your life might as well be over. What? So while Alia is looking at Marinette's design, SUDDENLY ADRIAN! Admiring the designs that he thought Alia drew. Alia tells him that's not the case, and that it was Marinette who drew them. Adrian is quick to compliment and encourage Marinette, leaving our heroine, of course, unable to say what she means. Well, um, yeah, I like, um, designs that, um, go... Upward? Uh, um, while stopping, I mean- English, motherfucker, do you speak it? God, I love that scene. Also, I love Adrian's reaction right here. That sh** is just funny. Anyways, Adrian gives Marinette one last good luck and leaves. Presumably to wonder what the hell just happened back there. And while Alia and Marinette fangirl over Adrian's compliments, Sabrina, who I forgot to mention was voiced by Mary F. Harrington, and Chloe, who I shall now dub as Chloe Bitchwad, are busy being jealous by what Adrian has just done, and both think that Chloe will make a design that will be MILES better than Marinette's. As soon as Chloe steals her sketchbook. Wait, what? Hold on, am I reading this correctly? There is no way that she could possibly do something as stupid as that! Your design will blow everyone else's out of the water! Yeah, it will. As soon as I can get my hands on this sketch pad. You've gotta be shitting me. Okay. Trying to shove her away from Adrian is bad enough. But stealing her designs? Isn't Marinette supposed to be pathetic compared to you in your perspective? Didn't you say your design would be better than hers? Well, in that case, why steal from her? I know you could say that Marinette copied yours, but you're using a design that you consider inferior to what you would have come up with! Chloe, do you secretly like Marinette? 
Do you really wish that you were her and so try to take credit for all the work that she has done and make her look like she copied you? Whatever it is, you're really not living up to your feelings towards calling her a completely pathetic person. Also, it makes you look like an even bigger idiot, so screw you. So after running into a wall like an idiot, we cut to... Wait, wait, we're already seeing Hakma? Don't get me wrong, I support this guy more than the heroes themselves, but isn't it a bit too early for this? Oh, uh, never mind. We cut back to Marinette, who begins sketching her ideas. Many of them she scraps, and I might as well make this reference while I'm at it. Nothing. No ideas. Useless, empty brain. Then she notices a Birdman. No, not that one. Named Xavier Ramier, voiced by Todd Habercorn, known for voicing Italy in Italia Axis Powers. The only thing we get out of this character is that he's obsessed with pigeons. Happy day! Splendid is the afternoon day! Ah, oh, Edgar, you fancy one. <laughs> Fantastic! However, one of the cops, Roger Rancombri, father of Sabrina, reprimands him and kicks him out for feeding the pigeons. And he informs Mr. Ramier, and by that I mean us, that he's banned from every single park in Paris. All the park keepers know about you, Mr. Ramier. You're banned from every park in Paris. Isn't there a place where he could feed the pigeons in peace without having to be harassed by the local park keeper? I understand that pigeons will poop all over the place, but at least they aren't terribly CGI, dive bombing like kamikaze pilots, making plane sounds, and attacking the city because of global warming. Actually, I wonder how many times I could reference the worst movie I've ever seen, Birdemic Shock and Terror. In fact, let's keep a count. Let's see how many Birdemic references I can make in this review. So far, I've only done four. See that number? It's going to go up. And this is enough for Hakma to send an Akuma after Ramie and make him one of his minions. Fly away, my little Akuma, and evilize him. And if you thought that the bubbler looked ridiculous, just wait until you see what miserable excuse of a minion Hawk Moth has created this time. Mr. Pigeon, I'm Hawk Moth. Neither this police officer nor any other of the park keepers should stop you from taking care of your friends. What would Paris be without pigeons? What would pigeons be without you? <laughs> what is that? What the f is that? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Pigeon. And his evil diabolical plan is for all the pigeons to take over Paris. And if I may add something, and I'm sure that I'm speaking for everybody when I say This is a stupid freaking villain! Two episodes in, and already we finally see a villain that not only managed to outsuck the bubbler in design, but also motives. And I am not kidding when I call the design ridiculous. Seriously, look at it! He's wearing salmon boots, which while they are accurate to a pigeon's legs, do not mix well with black. He has no wings whatsoever, and for God's sake, why is his head pink? And unlike the salmon boots, this is not accurate to a pigeon's head. This would be right at home for Filthy Frank's alien. And his intentions are just plain stupid. While the bubble rule is pretty overdramatic, I will admit that it did present him as a threat. This guy, he just wants pigeons to take over Paris. Where's the trouble in that? Then again, when Mr. Pigeon is born, his first instincts are to... Do that. And his intentions could be worse. He could attack gas stations. Back to Marinette and Sabrina taking a picture of the hat so Chloe could have her dad pay someone else to copy it. We're so awesome! We... Chloe. Did I mention that Chloe is the worst? Also, here's a nice little animation error. Right in this particular cut, Chloe's phone manages to flip. So what, does she have some sort of supernatural power to flip phones really fast? I don't know. We then get a montage of Marinette working on the hat. There really isn't much to say about this scene. I mean, it does showcase Marinette's sewing skills pretty nicely, though I will say that this part 
is admittedly cute. <laughs> Tiki, you're too cute for your own good. And with 13 hours remaining, the hat is almost complete. However, she realizes that she's missing a pigeon feather. So she goes back to where she was originally, finds a pigeon feather, and then runs into Roger, who, after going about his business, Well, at least they didn't kill him while he was doing his business. Out in the open. So while taking a bus back home, instead of driving a Mustang, which is a plug-in hybrid, Marinette wonders what's taking so long. Then after looking outside, pigeons galore! This is weird. Marinette, don't touch them! They may be infectious! We then see the news of pigeons taking over, and Mr. Pigeon makes an announcement. Well, at least, what I think is an announcement. Roo! Roo! Sorry to ruffle your feathers, but Paris now belongs to the pigeons! Flap, flap! Roo! Roo! Yeah, that's nice, but I have one question. Why So Marinette finds cover, transforms into Ladybug, and her obligatory transformation sequence here, and is on the hunt for Mr. Pig- HOLY SHIT THE BIRDS ARE AIRPLANES! And then Cat Noir appears! Out of nowhere! And it turns out that he's allergic to feathers. Keep that in mind for later. So it turns out that all the park keepers have vanished, which means Ladybug and Cat Noir have to find him immediately. The problem is, they don't know where he is, but Ladybug comes up with a plan to lure him in. We get it! This is set in Paris! Not a single person in this audience thinks that this is set in somewhere else! Like, San Jose! And then... This happens. I'm sexy and I know it. Act natural or you'll never show up! What do you mean? I am acting natural. Look at this fucking well, I hope they're proud of themselves. Two episodes in, and I already have less than nothing to say about what I'm looking at right now. Seriously, what is the point of this? What next? Are we going to cut to Damien Carter hanging out with the family? Keep in mind that this was the very first clip that I've ever seen from this entire series. So you could only imagine how confused and alienated I was when I saw this. I mean, this is the sole reason why I thought that this series was going to suck. It is just that ridiculous. Then again, I really shouldn't be surprised. I completely skimmed over the personality differences between Adrian and Cat Noir in the last episode. While Adrian's more laid back, Cat Noir is the kind of person which you want to have a party with. Seriously, this guy's charismatic, enthusiastic, and not to mention really funny. Well, except for the cat puns. I'm feline more generous than usual today. Which life? I've got nine. Trying to think of one that's perfect. Ha 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 
He then orders the duo to hand over the Miraculouses, or else his pigeons will open fire. No, I'm not shitting you. The pigeons will in fact shit all over our heroes if they don't surrender. Now if only they spat out bird acid. Naturally, Cat Noir uses his cataclysm to break out of the cage, and then Ladybug and Cat Noir approach the villain like they want to beat the shit out of them. Seriously, look at them, they're so- they look so evil! Are we sure that these guys are the heroes? Because they really aren't convincing me right now. So the bird brain lunatic makes his escape sending HOLY SHIT THEY'RE BOMBING PIGEONS! So the duo barely escape the pigeon attack and decide to go to the floor level of Le Grand Paris, a Parisian hotel owned by the mayor himself. However, I've got to get out of here before my secret identity is revealed. I would want that! Yeah, you wouldn't want to let the cat out of the bag. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> very funny. Now you know how we feel. So they make it downstairs, and here's where we first see the mayor of Paris himself, Andre Bourgeois, voiced by Joe Walkman. He tells Ladybug and Cat Noir that they've got to save Paris before he loses money. But because of his time limit, Cat Noir asks Mayor Bourgeois if he has some place to hide because he has an urgent need. And because Cat Noir looks like he has to pee, the mayor decides to make this joke. There's paper in there, but perhaps you would prefer a litter tray? Oh, God, that was tasteless! So yeah, Cat Noir goes into a hotel room and feeds Flag some camembert to regain his energy. There really isn't much to the scene other than that ladybug pillow in the background. Because subtlety! So, Ladybug notices that all of the pigeons are flying in the same direction, so when Adrian transforms back into Cat Noir off-screen, thank God, Ladybug decides to follow them. Wait a minute. I just realized something. We only had one obligatory transformation sequence in this! Only one! <laughs> yes! Oh my god, I get a break! Oh wait, we're only two episodes in. Damn it! Uh. Oh, I really need to keep down the screaming. Seriously, I screamed a lot during this review. It's not even funny. We cut to the Grand Palai, where Mr. Pigeon is keeping all the park keepers. <laughs> Do you think that they can keep the tree-hugging hippie while they're at it? So rather than go through the front door, which would be the easy way in, they decide to sneak into the building from the roof. Then they come up with probably the most perfect plan ever. Okay, you open the window, I'll grab him and yank him up onto the roof, then you snag his bird call away from him. And just when they're about to execute it... <laughs> So much for the element of surprise. So much for the element of surprise. Damn it, quit stealing my words! Ow. So time to go to plan B. They decide to attack Mr. Pigeon head on, and by the power of bullshit, the bird brain uses pigeons as boxing gloves and beats Ladybug and Cat Noir's faces in. Honestly, my brain has officially melted at this point, so let's just try to finish this up as soon as possible. So Ladybug decides to use her lucky charm, and what does she conjure up this time? A wire hanger! Okay, okay, I'm kidding, it's just another Birdemic reference. But seriously, what does she conjure up this time? A coin? And she uses this coin to... Tire yo-yo around Mr. Pigeon's ankle, loop it around one of the metal supports, buys a bag of popcorn, then tosses the bag to Cat Noir, causing popcorn to fall onto Mr. Pigeon, luring the other pigeons to swarm him, and Ladybug pulls the string, causing the bird collar to fall. Cat Noir catches it, but a quick sneeze causes him to drop it, and it's a scramble for all three to catch it. They all do, but Ladybug slams Cat Noir's hand down, crushing the bird call, releasing the Akuma, she turns everything back to normal, and after this, we never see Robbie again! HOLY sh Jesus. So you guys know the drill. Insert status quo scene here, reset everything back to normal, and then fist bump. Pound it. 
Another day, another attack, another victory for the Miraculous Duo. And one last Pandemic reference that I have to make, so let's finish this bitch. Hold on, I forgot one reference. Adrian is a blonde model. Now we can finish this. With only an hour left, Marinette finishes up the hat and we see the hat contest occur. Unfortunately, Gabriel couldn't attend, but Natalie has him covered by using what I presume to be FaceTime on a tablet. How convenient. Marinette arrives late and sets up the hat. Only problem is that Chloe copied her design and passed it off as her own, saying that Marinette copied her. <gasps> no fair! Marinette copied my design! It's scandalous! How could you do that? <laughs> yeah, you're a terrible actress! However, this plan backfires, as Marinette shows that she handmade it, and get this! She signed it! She finally remembered to sign something! Good God, and I thought that she would never remember to sign anything after the mess that was the bubbler! <laughs> How miraculous! Oh God damn it. So yeah, Chloe cries home to her daddy, and believe me, I wish I made that up. <laughs> Mr. Regress declares Marinette the winner, and Adrian puts on the derby hat. Remember Cat Noir's feather allergy? Sorry, I'm allergic to feathers. <gasps> well, what do you know? He's allergic to feathers. Say, Mary, let me give you something to think about. He's a blondie with green eyes, and he has feather allergies. Isn't that enough to clue you in that he's probably the person you've been fighting alongside with this whole time? Can't you tell the similarities between the two? Can't you tell that they both have blonde hair, green eyes, the same voice, and the same feather allergy, even though we're two episodes in and already this should be good enough evidence to prove that Cat Noir is secretly your one true crush fighting alongside you, unaware that you're secretly his one true crush who's trying to protect Paris. <laughs> STUPID! YOU ARE MADE OF STUPID! Oh wait, one last chance for a Birdemic reference. Adrian may have trouble modeling with the feather allergy, but hey. At least we won't wake up the next day with bird flu virus. So that was Mr. Pigeon. How does it hold up? Well, much like the bubbler, pretty good. However, much like the bubbler, Mr. Pigeon is an awful villain as a whole. In fact, I could actually consider him worse. With pathetic intentions, bird brain personality, no pun intended, and not to mention the most laughable design for any villain in any show, I could definitely classify this guy as the worst akumatized victim in this entire series. However, maybe that was the point. Maybe he was supposed to be this ridiculous, just to get a few laughs out of us. I mean, how could anybody take a villain that acts like this... Seriously. Well, regardless of whether it's intentional or not, this is definitely one of the funniest episodes of Miraculous so far. Everything that made the bubbler great is here, and to give credit where credit is due, Ty Habercorn put up a great performance as Mr. Pigeon. He was probably aware of what kind of character he was playing, and he definitely made it work. And it honestly sounded like he was having fun voicing this character. Even if his dialogue mostly consists of... Yeah. That. If you haven't seen it already, go and watch it. It might not be for everyone considering it's humor, but it may or may not get a few laughs out of you. Especially if you've seen Birdemic before watching this, like I have. Alright, let's see what the next episode is. Okay, I guess we won't be dealing with another weird villain for quite a while. Thank God. Anyways, next time on the Miraculous Marathon, we're going to be looking at stormy weather. Until then, this is ASLB, and I've got nothing else to say other than, see ya.